So here's some German anarchists are taking me with a wild car, you know, I was just sleeping out here and um, I was just staying with another YouTuber for, for one and a half month, YouTuber and um, yeah, so I'm going down south, some German anarchists here, real nice, they got a real nice truck here, <laughs> it looks like a UPS thing <laughs> with a dog in there. So it was the first car I asked really, it says worldwide Dienstleistung. Uh, oh, nice. Now I'm in that truck, they have two dogs here. <laughs> now I'm gonna put myself here on the bed here. And uh, yeah. Open up my uh, open up my beer like uh, they're going to Morocco. On the motorway in, in the house. <laughs> they even got a, a wood stove. in my bottle <laughs> in France yeah. <laughs> so this guy is a real shepherd but he said he remembers you know when there were still no houses here you know it was all empty but he's still doing it but it's getting harder and harder A, fra a French Shepherd, well you can see that, you've got some dog here, and my backpack is in, over there. Motorway, the highway. Pharaoh. Me. Now here in France, you know, these people, I guess they're all boat people, immigrants, you know, cheap labor, everybody profiting of it, you know, the, you know, the, the rich ones are profiting of it. <laughs> yeah. It's just a feudal system. There's the lady with her convertible of the feudal system. Yeah. Last night there was a terrible storm here, so I had to get in the middle of the night. Really terrible. Uh, so I had to, you know, get up in the middle of the night, four o'clock or five o'clock, and put my storm lines out. You know. But I broke a couple of my bags here. The very special bags. Very expensive. Well, I got them for free, and uh, so I couldn't put them all. You know, the wind was, you know, blowing everywhere. You know, tried to get these lines out. You know, they were blowing everywhere. Yeah, but uh, you know, well, this is really stable. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm here. This is called Franche Comté. A lot of green meadows. Uh, storm lines. Yeah, it felt like being in the Himalayas or something. You know? A terrible storm, a terrible blizzard, you know. So you have to get out of your dust bag, your sleeping bag, otherwise you know your tent will break or you know it's just a choice to make get out in the cold or you know die <laughs> because your equipment will break your house will break so I had to get out in the middle of the night so here's the house of Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie 
it's a sort of a castle here. It's a real nice area. So I just came hitchhiking from Italy and uh, I thought, well, I'd just pass for a cup of tea, you know, but he wouldn't let me in here. So I'm going to that way, to the north. Good, Miraval. No cup of tea for me. Another castle of those pharaohs. Actually, the rest of it is up there, so you know, go and have a look. Oh. And uh, it's a chateau there, it's called the Green Castle. Fleur de Lis, and that is the Green Castle. And here's a story about it. It was a uh, uh, interesting the colors here. Red, you know, red, blue, blue for the war, red for the uh, the red house, and yellow might be the white house. Anyway, a bunch of pharaohs. They are the pharaohs, the aristocracy. Oh, nice little village. So here's the green castle, Chateau Vert. It's a lot warmer here than in Italy, I must say so. And uh, well, there isn't much to see anyway, you know. There's just a, uh, a pile of rubbles, you know, and uh, these pharaohs, they left anyway. They went to, uh, you know, like in Freemasonry and all that, taking key positions. This is the old system, the old world order, the feudal system. It's now the new world order. The, the Masonic system, and they're all the same. Actually, it's interesting that this castle belonged to the Pope, but they hijacked religion, they hijacked Jesus and the whole thing, you know, and it, it all became property of the, uh, the aristocracy and of Pharaoh. They just hijacked it all, built a castle, and it's all the same. It's, it's a hierarchy, the, uh, the, the Vatican and, you know, the Catholic Church. They're a bunch of pedophiles, just like the uh, the aristocracy are, and the masons. It's all one pile of rubble. Liars. Now they're in the parliament. That's from parler, mentir, to talk and to lie. Parlare, mentire. So, do you see the Templar sign here? There? Yeah, so you know who they are. It makes an A, but you know it's in red, so they, you know, they, they know exactly what they're doing. It's like this pyramid. So that was the castle. Let's have a look. Somebody murdered by the Gestapo, by the French Gestapo, in 1943. They're uh, all dead for nothing. We're still back in the uh, dictatorship, you know. So and that is a church with the pentagram, uh, you know, in front of it. It's about a thousand years old. It is octagonal here, so, you know, probably Templar stuff. Slept here, there's the motorway. You know, here in France, I met several people, two people, who knew somebody who got, uh, somebody got shot in the, in the Bataclan in uh, Paris at the, or during the Friday the 13th attacks. So people did get killed, you know. So everybody who thinks nobody got killed, well, that's wrong. I mean, they, uh, it's an occult day because uh, the French king, Philippe le Bel, he arrested the Templars and out of the Templars, on that day, and out of the Templars came the, uh, the Freemasons. So they do kill people. It's a sacrifice. Uh, don't think nobody got hurt. I mean, I met people who knew... I met one man from Paris who said, well, he knew somebody who got shot there. And I met another guy in a completely other place in, in France, somewhere else, who knew a girl who was in there. So they kill people, you know. Just as the World Trade Center, they kill people. So don't think that don't, they didn't kill anybody, no, that nobody got hurt. Well, that's wrong. Uh, but the ones who did it, well, that, that's not well, how they present it to us. It's the government doing it, it's the Templars, it's Switzerland behind it. 
Uh, and the Swiss, they got their man on the, at the head of the French government, Manuel Valls. He's 100% Swiss. I made a film about it in French, Agent Dormant Suisse, Manuel Valls. Uh, you see him with the Swiss flag and things like that, you know. And um, he is um, from, a, from his mother's side, they're from the Dutessin, a Swiss, uh, a Swiss family who did uh, crimes against humanity in, uh, in uh, Africa, you know, to get, they got really very rich, they're billionaires. And from his father's side, he's from a, um, a family of bankers, Spanish bankers. But Vals, you know, that's not very much like Rodriguez or Martinez, you know. Vals is from the Valleys. It's a place in uh, in Switzerland where most of the um, almost all the the guard members of the Swiss Guard of the Vatican they're from. And there's also a museum in uh, in Valleys, Le Valais in French, because they speak either German or French there. But all Swiss Germans, you know, either speak that language. So that guy is 100% uh, Swiss. Just like Obama, he's of Swiss descent, and President Eisenhower, you know, he's Swiss. 100% Swiss, Mr. Eisenhower. J. Edgar Hoover, he was a Swiss. His real name was Hoover. President Herbert Hoover, during the Depression, he was a Swiss. His name, a real name, Hoover. I already showed that to you. Uh, Alan Dulles of the, of the CIA, Swiss. They're all Swiss, believe me now. And now they got Manuel Valls, and you see the result, what's going on, you know. Swissy behind it, believe me, was founded by the Templars, and out of the Templars came the Masons. And Swissy gives the orders worldwide to the, uh, to the World Wide Web of Masonry, you know. And they just, the Templars are the military wing, and they do the killing, it's Octagon. And they've got some brainwashed uh, kids, you know, that they, they take out, out of their cell, you know, like in the middle of the night. Uh, you know, uh, pity criminals, you know. And so they're two, two uh, groups, you know, octagon killers, you know, they're white. And uh, then they leave those, uh, some, they leave those brainwashed boys, uh, you know, they, they plant them in the middle of Paris and the only thing they can do is empty their mags, you know. They're very far, they're very advanced in brainwashing. I think I got a part of it, you know, when they put me in prison the last time. Oh, man. And the Swiss and their um, uh, torture detention centers where I was in, they practice um, oxygen deprivation, which is part of the, uh, the brainwashing MK Ultra techniques, you know, because it kills your brains. So they can replace it, like you know, like with other ideas, like uh-uh, you know, somebody coming. Hello. Nothing. Oh, and now he's coming to this one here. Okay, better wrap it up. What a fantastic stairway! Wow, fantastic. The biological wine, you know, or the biological, the uh, the vineyards are not treated with uh, only with natural products. That's why I slept here in the uh, Franche Comté. It's in the east, in the middle of France. So I, I was heading north again in uh, Franche Comté. Comté means it belongs to a count, un comte, uh, le, le comte. So everything belongs to Pharaoh. That's probably the descendants. Uh, these are the Europeans. <laughs> what a backpack. <laughs> so here in a French town here, Poligny, Swiss life. Uh, I know, by my own experience, they don't like life. They just want to make money. You know, they're everywhere. Three for Horus, Isis, Horus and Seth. Uh, the big one with the, uh, this here is Seth, the big one with the Templar's cross. The idea, you know, the devil. The little one here, that's Horus, you know, the sun. And the middle is the woman, Isis. Yeah. 
It's a horse with a funny tail. I don't know what it is. No, it's a cleaning his car. You better clean up the government, mate. Not your car. Ah, pharaohs here, the pyramid with the world domination. Well, they're there with the new world order. And this is the old world order. Yeah, the feudal system. With the crown on it. I don't want to go counting as they've got the sun here. I think it's the, uh, the rooster here, which symbolizes Horus. Why, well, he's still cleaning up his car, eh, Frenchy? Oh, wakey, wakey. It says Hotel d'Astor. This is not French, you know, this is, uh, it's Scandinavian, you know, the aces, you know, the, uh, yeah, like in the, uh, the uh, Scandinavian uh, sagas and Torg. I don't know what that means. Sounds familiar, though. Somewhere in June. Uh, camping out in Italy. Next to the motorway. It was really hard, you know, to get out of the motorway, you know, it was all closed. Uh, there's the Mediterranean. I was quite lucky to find this place here because, you know, it must have been some sort of building or something. <laughs> I mean, where do you want to put your tent in this bush here? It's like South Africa. Maybe I'll wait a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's the first time like really being at an Italian petrol station, you know. And it's all closed, you know. If you go and hitchhike in Italy, well, you better make sure you got a wire cutter with you. you know, some nice orange trees. And... So I had to walk the whole thing around, you know, and uh, to find a place where the Italians did it for me, you know. So, yeah. So, I slept in the bush there somewhere. So, actually, this was the, uh, the Gaddafi um, petrol company. I just got stopped by the cops here. They were really nice, you know, really nice. So, this is Tony. He looks like an Afghan. Yeah. He's from Italy. It's a Mujahideen, eh? Yeah, Mujahideen. Uh, like our yeah. Partigiani. Yeah, Partigiani. Yeah. To resistenza. Sempre. Si. Io anche de resistenza. So, he's got a, he's got a living, a like a camper here, you know. They just took me hitchhiking. Yeah. <laughs> Ciao, Tony. Wow. Ben. So in this forest is my hideout in that uh, abandoned uh, village, almost. I almost have to walk for one and a half hours over this here through the forest, only to get to the, uh, from the abandoned village, only to get to the post office. That's a good path actually. So this is Italy, you know. Italy is not just vino, mafia, you know, beaches, sunny sand and, you know, sunshine. But it's the north of Italy. Well, this is even not very far north. It's, uh, it's still on the, uh, on the Mediterranean, you know. So I have to walk one and a half hours to get to the post office. Nice. Uh, I I heard wild boar here. I heard them, you know, like you know, like this. And um, I think they have wolves here as well. Wolves and lynx. Well, the lynx they have for sure. And uh, I think there, I feel there are wolves as well. The people are really lovely here. They all got blue eyes, you know. They are the Ligurians. Uh, they're very calm. They look very trustworthy. They're very smiling. And they take hitchhikers and not the typical Italian macho type. You know, well, I mean, everybody got the right to be what he wants to be, eh? I, I don't mind. As long as they don't macho me. 
No, then I've shown some army techniques, yeah? Uh, we South Africans don't like that, you know? Uh, that macho stuff. Because, uh, you know, the machos are no, really, no, you know, if it comes to fighting, they don't stand their man, really. Yeah, so. Yeah. Nice day today. It was been raining for 10 days, you know. Uh, yeah. So, very different people here. The Celtic, Celtic, an old Celtic tribe, Liguria. I met some nice people. Uh, an Italian, one Italian guy took me hitchhiking. One Liguria, I don't say Italian, a Ligurian guy, because they're very different. They're, they're like, more like, I don't know. More like in Brittany, I think, like in France. Yeah. Celtic tribe. And uh, a guy who was living here with his French girlfriend. And uh, so he said, well, you have to go to another guy. He's living with an Israeli girlfriend. They all have children. So um, she's really sweet. Uh, she brought me a bread. I ate uh, already two times. Very hospitable. I would really like to go to Israel. Um, I mean, so I can find some others who have, you know, have been persecuted by the Nazis, like I have been, like for 18 horrible Swiss years. Oh, oh even a butterfly here. In February. <laughs> nice. Uh, the weather was so bad last night, the water took an, an entire olive tree down in the night. Uh, people died, landslides and people drowned, you know. It's just a small river. The big one is down there. Uh, you can see the big one. Uh, it gets real dangerous here in the mountains. I think this is sort of a water reservoir, you know. See the water lines here, the pipe here and there. So probably too much water. Here's the uh, for the excessive water, you know. So it probably was too much for the poor tree. And they get old, you know, olive trees. They get very old. Maybe this tree is probably hundreds of years old. I saw a tree once, an olive tree in France, it was over a thousand years old. Yeah. It gets very dangerous in the mountains, you know. Never camp, you know, next to a river like this, never do. Even if it's sunny weather, where you are, in the mountains it might rain and thunder and there's a whole tsunami coming down and it will kill you. Not many people know this, not even people who are living here know that. So that, that's why he does, you know, it would be a nice place to build a house, you know, down there. But do you see any houses? Well, I don't. <laughs> it's quite obvious. So any campers out there, you know, never put, never camp out next to the river, you know, go a bit up. Because even if it's the most beautiful weather in the world, it might rain into, in the mountains and then it will kill you or take you down. Just like this tree. Oh, that must it happened last night. We were real bad. I mean, we all got the idea of Italy, you know, a lot of a bunch of a heap of people, you know, all heaped up upon each other, you know, like in Rome or Napoli, you know, the typical, you know, images Hollywood shows, you know, like in Sicily and Syracuse. But, you know, they got real vast land, vast forests here in the north of Italy, which is like 180 degrees at the opposite of what Hollywood is showing, really. Ah, so, well, there's the village. You can see it. There's my post office. Yeah. Some church. Okay, I'm almost there. I think I did a bit quicker than one and a half hours. And, um, yeah, you know, and this is even, not even the, 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 the far north of Italy, like the Alps, 
or the Lombardic area or the Zutirol, south of Tyrol, where the one million people speak German as a first language actually, but it is in Italy. They even have a freedom party and an independence party, just like the Basque movement or the Corsicans or the IRA. And who actually grouped together. I saw them once in Corsica in 1994 or something where they all came together in the Giornata Internazionale, the international days of uh, European freedom fighters. Actually the, the village where I am, the abandoned village, I'll show some more pics, pics of it later on, uh, th there's only one road and it's called uh, Via della Libertà, you know, the Freedom Road, <laughs> which is quite suitable, I might say. Yeah, so, good. Go to the post office. No, the other way. Silly. You see a lot, all these terraces here and there on the other side. Uh, that must, in the Middle Ages, that, that was done in the Middle Ages, you know, there must have been hundreds of thousands of people maybe living here working it's, a, it's an enormous work everything is like with terraces you imagine all the work Some really hard-working people eh? and now, now there's nobody anymore you know that don't do anything with it it's just more terraces you can see how they're made, you know, with the, with the stone here. You put a stone wall so it keeps it all together. And there it is. Yeah. You hear the river down there? Well, there's Isis with little Horus. I'm getting to the village here. So this is uh, uh, Italy here in February. It's almost March actually. You see, it's everybody, you know, everybody who thinks like Italy is only beaches, you know, there's a lot of hills and forest and it's not even in the far north, you know, because that's the Mediterranean there. I don't know if you can see it. That's the Mediterranean. And there as well. And if you think Italy is always warm and beaches, well, you're wrong, you know. Because here's snow in the mountains. This place is called Liguria. Liguria. Because of the Ligurian Celtic tribes who apparently settled down here. And there's almost nobody living there. There's only one house here. Somewhere. Snow. And I just hiked up, hiked up from the um, from the village down there, behind the uh, uh, I can't see it anymore. Somewhere over there. Well, anyway, I don't see it, you know, on the screen, the sun is shining in it. So it's somewhere behind the, uh, behind the mount, behind the mountain there. And I think there behind it here. Yeah, well, anyway. So here's my backpack. Here's, uh, this is called the Nazar Bunjuk. It's against the evil eye. I got it from a Turk. Turkish friend gave it to me. 
against the Swiss evil eye. So, it's beautiful here, eh? And then there are the Alps, you know, that's even higher and more snow, but this is not even the Alps. This is northern Italy, where the, uh, at the Mediterranean, next to Albenga. So today, February uh, 28th, uh, 2016, here in Italy, there's even snow on the mountains near. There's snow in the pyramid. Look. So, uh, this is quite nearby, you know. It's not as high as the other mountains. So, you still think Italy is warm and sunshine all the time. I've been here for three weeks. I haven't seen any sun, you know. It's raining, stormy, windy, foggy, all the time. It's been raining for three days without a row. In, in a row, without a stop. This wasn't there before. <laughs> Do you hear the river? It's roaring. It's like a motorway. Yeah, there it is. Oh, it's clearing up a little. There must have been some deadly accidents, you know, because if it rains like this, you know, like three days and people die, you know, uh, there will be accidents and landslides and... After a couple of days of raining, you know, That's my village. Oh well, my, it's not fine. All Germans, you know, all Germans are Swiss Germans. So I'm going to look at that village up there. And I'll show you. Snow in Italy, near to the Mediterranean. All snow. It snows. Mediterranean is there and still snows, you know. So there were the lesbians, and here we are back to the Italians here. See the difference? And those poor creatures, they never come out of here. This is how they lock away dogs in Italy. They probably only use them for, uh, for hunting, you know, and for the rest of the time, maybe tw twice a year, and for the rest of the time they are just here in prison. I was thinking of letting them free, but they will catch them. They won't survive anyway, like in the wild, or, and if they die, you know, and if they, if they won't find them again, they put some new ones, some, two new victims in there, so there's no use, you know. If I think a couple of moves ahead, which I do, there's no use to it. Huh? <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Look, look, they're still young, very young dogs. They look sweet, you know. A friendly dog. What a what a poor life. Yeah. <laughs> that's me doing the whistling, and me doing like. <laughs> yeah, I've got a I've got a, I've got a miserable life too. Yeah. Yo yo yo. Uh, I wish I could free you and help you. You know, I'm the man of freedom. So, but I can't. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. So, this is where my road is going here.
there's the abandoned village where I'm at, chilling out. So oh, here's the castle. Hey, my lady, you go up the stairs first. I'll follow you. you know. So down there is the post office somewhere. So the castle actually belonged to the Lord Garetto, apparently. And then I passed that house here, which they call the palace, Il Palazzo. Um, I don't see it now. Yeah, there. And uh, it has a pyramid roof. And at the entrance, you know, at, at you know, um, oh, there it is. At the entrance, at four places, they got a pyramid and a ball on top of it for the, uh, the world domination. So when this fall, fell apart, you know, then they, they you know, most certainly, they moved to there. You know, and, and you know, a sort of newer dwelling where they, um, to have it noticed that, you know, the aristocracy are, in fact, uh, from the pharaohs, that they, uh, they, they put those pyramids on it, you know. It's like a secret symbol. So th this, again, it proves my theory, which I've already proven that the, uh, the pharaohs became the aristocracy. So why else put four pyramids, you know, carved into stone, like in front of your new dwelling, you know, at the entrance, where everybody can see who pops in. So when this castle fell to pieces, the Lord Garetto, well, it's, it sounds like Garuta, you know, the sort of mafia, sort of South American, Bogota sort of thing, you know, with, with uh, two pegs on, on each side and a metal wire you, you sling on somebody's neck and then pull it, you know. Well, that's what they did, actually, you know. So, well, like, you know, so this is where he went, the pyramid and the, the ball of the world domination. And uh, that too, the pyramid. So that's what I told you, pharaohs are here. You know, and the aristocracy, they are the pharaohs. And this house with the pyramid on the roof, they call it Palazzo, the palace. Well, not because it's the biggest house in the village, but for the obvious other reasons, which lie here, and which lie further down in Egypt on the other side of the dip over there. So this is the octagon in the house, you know, this is where the aristocracy went to. You know, Templars as well. I'll explain that to you. So this is in the abandoned village from the Middle Ages. Someone's chilling out here. You know. You just caught it, there's nobody in there. Uh, the towel has been hanging away all the time. Well, it's better to be here than into a damn Swiss prison, you know, without oxygen. At least you've got oxygen here. Old tools. It's all empty. You can just squat in here. But it's dangerous, you know. Apparently, there was a uh, an earthquake in the eight in the nineteenth century, and people had to leave. Uh, so it might just all of a sudden it might just follow in your head. Uh, More stuff here. Hello, any ghost in there?
bloody hole in the floor. There's two holes in the floor. Oh, you can sort of, what happened to my house, you know? So, well, let's say it's all abandoned here. Right. I'll have a look to the end here. Oh, anybody wants to live here? Any YouTubers? <laughs> Some water abandoned stuff here. Oh, somebody living there. Amazing. It's nice here. I just saw some orange trees down there. Oh, yeah, there's a lemon hanging around here all by itself. Oh, so you got an idea of what a Ligurian abandoned village looks like. That's where I'm chilling out. There's some cats, a lot of cats living here. On my TV. get any further there. There's a whole lot of rubbles left. So this is a deserted village. So how is that? be a monk. That's the deserted village. That's the house where I've been staying. Yeah. The abandoned village. Yeah. Well, it's not that abandoned. Abandoned, actually. Okay, I ring the bell. You know, I'm not a whistleblower in this case. I'm, I'm, I'm a bell ringer. You know, to wake you up. Really, a whistle, whistle isn't even loud enough. You know, you need a bell. So, as it is Sunday anyway, I ring the. Well, I had almost gone swearing. I ring the the f bell for you. Yeah. <laughs> so then, in a village nearby, also in Liguria, is just you know a couple of clicks away from here, which is called uh, Castel Vittorio. In the middle of the night, the Germans they, they took 200 men, women, and children out of the out of their beds, they lifted them out of their bed in the middle of the night and all shot them all, even the babies and the children. In this area, you can see, you know, this is, this is good for guerrilla warfare, eh? So that's what they tried and what the Germans did then, you know, and just kill them all, the babies and the children, everybody, eh? And now they're back, you know, <laughs> they're all back, you know, with, with the money they robbed in Italy, 
they bought themselves some fancy houses, you know, through the Swiss bank where they all hid it. And they're all back. And nobody talk, talks about Switzerland. They're all back. We're back, you know, like in a horror, a Spielberg horror film, uh, you know, we're back, you know. And nobody talks a word about it, you know, not in the media, not on telly. You know, this is what's going on, you know, I'm gonna videotape some, uh, uh, some names on the doors for you. I'll, I'll walk all the way back to that village there. I'll do that for you. Hey, take me hours, but I'll do that. We're back. Well, I'm back too. So at the moment, I've got only oat flakes, Avena, I've won in French. That means oats. I've only got oats, biological oats, left to eat, you know. It's real gastronomical, you know, that's all I have, you know. Uh, like a Scotsman. Oui, where's me kilt? Yeah, I should wear me kilt, yeah. So, you know. Well, my ancestors partly are Scottish from my, from my dad's side, so. South Africa. Yeah, so um, I've got three types of oat flakes here. I fry them in olive oil and I put some sugar over it. But you have to do it when the flame is gone, you know, otherwise you burn up your pan. And other, my other menu, gastronomical oat, oat menu, is um, I fry them in olive oil, put salt over it. And the third one is I just put uh, some boiling water over it and I, I crunch them like that. Yeah. Three types of oatmeal. <laughs> yeah, keeps the Germans away. <laughs> Cats are hungry, they eat everything, even the rice. Now here's some hungry cats of the, the, uh, the empty village here. And they eat it. Yeah. So, you know, we have those... Um, uh, they didn't eat the bread though, but they will finally, in the end. likes the rice. She's very hungry. They eat everything if they you know, they're just, you know. Uh... You know, it's just our cats in our society, they're so spoiled, they don't even eat the, uh, the cat food of another brand, you know. But if they, I t you, you can see it here. If they're really hungry, they even go and eat Chinese. You know. <laughs> yeah, well, that's all I have. <laughs>